Today we will be discussing a really interesting and fun topic, taking a taxi in China. Okay, so I'm a businesswoman. I go to China for a business trip. I'm arriving in China. I'm walking out of the airport and I saw all of those taxis. No, you just made a very big mistake there. Uh -oh. um, so what you need to do when you arrive in China and when you are at the airport, you need to follow the signs to the taxi stand. Mm -hmm. Also, don't walk out of the airport. Don't talk to any people that offer you a taxi ride while you're still in the arrivals hall because most of the time these are black cabs as they call them, illegal taxis and they will often scam you and charge you much more than you would normally have to pay. So if you arrive in China and unless your, um, your host has arranged somebody to pick you up, they will be there with holding a sign, yep. but if there's nobody there for you to pick you up go to the taxi stand, follow the signs to the taxi stand. You will get in line with a lot of other people and there will be somebody there that appoints a cab to you when, once it's your turn. And that's how you take a taxi from the airport. Okay, so just to give an indication, I think a normal taxi, if you take it from the airport, go to the city center, it takes about, it's maybe 100 to 200 RMB, about uh, like, 35 euro around I would say yeah and be prepared to have cash so if you don't have cash with you yet and within the airport most of the time they have the ATM machines you can take some cash with you so another thing you should uh, take into consideration is that uh, unlike in some other countries that you might have visited English is not spoken very well by uh, Chinese taxi drivers. There are exceptions, but most of them will not speak English very well. So if you come to them with an address in English, they might not know where you want to go. So we always advise people to have your destination in both English for yourself, but also in Chinese characters, which you can show to the taxi driver so he knows where to go. Exactly. So have the Chinese characters. even. Even you think that you know the name, you can tell the taxi driver the name is, but your pronunciation probably is very different than the, the real pronunciation. So the characters, the written form is always safe. Yeah. yeah. And another thing that you should um, also uh, keep in mind is that a lot of taxi drivers are actually migrant workers from the countryside. So they have moved from other provinces to places like Beijing to Shanghai to work there as a taxi driver. So they might not have grown up in that city. They might not even know the city that well. And mm -hmm. therefore, uh, it's all the more important that you have uh, like the address in, in written in Chinese. So they might also be able to look it up uh, in a navigation app. Yeah, so if uh, you arrive at the hotel, it's mostly easiest way is that you get a hotel card like by the reception. So you show the taxi driver, this is address, this is a hotel, it will be much easier. And also in the hotel card, you, they also have the uh, reception numbers. If the taxi driver don't know exactly where this hotel is, they can always call the reception to get the direction from the hotel staff. So taxi drivers will normally turn on their meters. They will have their meters running. Um, I know that in a lot of places uh, you might be worried about are the meters rigged? Yeah. Is that all safe? But my own experience is if you get in a taxi and uh, the meter is turned on by the taxi driver, you don't have to worry about anything uh, and it's all safe and, um, and, uh, and true. So does the taxi driver always have the meters on? Most of the time they do, like I said, but sometimes, for instance, if you're out of the way in the countryside or in a uh, more, more remote airport, they might have a slightly different uh, way of doing things and they might not want to turn the meter on. They might not even want to take you if you insist the meter is turned on okay. and they might just quote like a fixed price. And then you might want to do some haggling and some bargaining to see if you can get the price down. but. 
Haggling and bargaining is a, is a different topic that, um, that we will be talking about in a different lesson. So after hearing all of this, you might think, oh, that's such a hassle taking a taxi in China. I just don't want to be bothered. Um, I'll just take the metro system, for instance. That's easy. You can get a ticket and you can get off and uh, get back to your hotel like that. But uh, in most places in China, in most cities, the metro stations are actually close at like around 11 o'clock. They, they close very early. So if you're out in a bar or maybe with some Chinese friends in a karaoke KTV um, uh, session, then it might be difficult to get back home or get back to your hotel after 11 o'clock. So you might definitely need a taxi. So that's why we think it's important that even if you don't plan to, you still are very aware of how these things work. Okay, nice to know about <laughs> taking a taxi in China. <laughs> so we hope this is helpful and uh, we'll see you for uh, the next lesson. Thank you. Thank you.